Right. You've got to make that into a song oh, when you say it. Sound bad, eh? Alright. Excellent. All good? All good. Uh, Everybody's got paper and pen? Yep. Right. Let's get started, shall we? Because I want to cover a fair bit. Try in one hour. Okay. Alright, I want you to head your notes with the, with the heading leadership and what you need to become and do to change your pin. That's one heading. Everybody's got paper and pen? You haven't got paper. Can we get some paper to people who come to class without paper? Leadership. That's one of the first things, yes. Yeah. Leadership, what you need to become. What I need to do to change my life. Yes. Leadership. Yes, could you please? And what I need to become. And you need to do to change my life. Are we talking pin number or? One more time. Leadership and what I've changed it to I because that's what I need to do. I need to do to become oh, sorry, what I need to become and do to change my pin. So if you're a supervisor now, what do you need to do to get to the next level? Everybody got that? Yeah, got it. Okay. So, mainly to change your pin is all about the create, being a good leader. Okay, you cannot change your pin without creating leadership skills yourself and teaching your distributors to become leaders. Okay? So, before you actually talk about being a leader, there's a few things that you have to be yourself to create good leadership skills. And number one is be thankful for everything you've got. Be thankful, thankful for everything you've got and everything you have. Because if you don't appreciate where you are in life right now, the universe won't deliver any more to you. So be thankful. And there's a lot to be thankful for. You know, there's people living in different parts of the world without a roof over their head, without food on the table, you know. And I believe all of us have at least those things, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, be thankful. Second part of leadership skills is listening well. Mark, have you got a paper and pen? Yeah. The paper He's, the paper. He's yeah. listening well. Yeah. Rule with leadership. That was so funny. <laughs> I love it. Listen well. Listen well. A rule with leadership. Are you listening well? Yeah. You should be taking notes too. Yeah. I am in my head. No. Which is actually one of the points I've got here is never rely on memory. Yeah, I've got paper and memory together. You need to take down your own notes. Because you will interpret things different than your partner will. She runs the show, so. Seven pants on. You as a pen. No, we're good. All right, not paper. Great. She wants pants, you'd be right. So listen, what? Okay? Take good notes is the next one. I'll do right that, yeah. And be a good student. No, that's just all of you. Take notes and be a good student. Don't be a follower. Don't be a follower. Be a student of what everybody else is doing. Pick what you want to do in your business and do it. <laughs> you what? You missed out on the part. We went to that part. Yes. Oh, okay, so can you say it again? Don't be a follower. Yeah. Be a student. Be, be a student, student of what everybody else is doing. Yeah. 
Now, being a leader, you know, you're going to, here's what's going to happen. Everybody wants to get to the president's team here? Yeah. Yeah? Hi, I'm here. I see a show of hands. Who wants to be a president's team? A president's team makes more than $30,000 a month. Mm. Do you want to be a president's team? Mm. <laughs> Which planet are you on yes. at the moment? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, to become a president's team, obviously you're going to be recruiting a lot of people in your business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to get some people who are going to join your business and say, Oh, this is an unbelievable business. You won't have to find another person. You're going to get rich of me alone. From me alone. <laughs> Who's had those people? Oha. If you haven't, you'll get them. You can't wait. Okay. <clears throat> and then, you never hear from that person again. <laughs> Who's had those people? So there are one hit wonder. There are one hit one that they totally disappear after that. Okay. You're going to have some people who will start off slow and then they'll start developing their business and then they get a bit more serious and they develop it more and they might become your president's team. So your role as a leader is to determine what kind of people are you dealing with? What kind of people are you working with? Because... Some of them talk like eagles, but you turn your back and they're scratching like chickens. <laughs> so determine the type of people you're working with. And it's really important to determine these type of people really quickly. Why? Because you don't want to spend and waste time with people who don't do what they say. Okay? I can tell you over the last 10 years, I've probably recruited over a thousand people in my business. But out of the thousand, I've probably got about five or six serious ones. Pay me over twenty thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I remember this conversation mm -hmm. when I first got started in Herbalife. Uh, there was a function, a Herbalife function, and it was to meet President's Team Rodney Drury, is one of the legends in Herbalife. Mm -hmm. And the first time I met Rod, I said, Rod, how many serious people? have you got in your business? And he said, Roger, I've probably got about six serious lines. And I looked at him and I went, six? He said, I've got three and a half thousand people in my organization. But the front line, to me, I've got six serious people that produced the three and a half thousand people mm -hmm. for my business. Mm -hmm. Rodney Drury makes over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. <laughs> That's why you never see him. Phantom um, of the RD. Six yeah. months. I'm still looking forward to meeting this guy. You know, yeah. there's you there's know, only a handful of guy. people Sorry? that have actually met Rodney yeah. Drury. Really? Is he American? No, he's from here, from oh, Australia. Yeah. Rodney retired in his first year of business. He retired. He retired in his first year of business. Rodney's goal, when I first met him, he said, Roger, promise me one thing. Dream big. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, my biggest problem was that I didn't dream big enough. That's the menu. He said, my goal was to make a million dollars a year. And when I achieved that in my first year, I didn't know what else to aim for because I'd reached my target. 
And he said, dream big. <coughs> if you want the private jet, put it down. If you want the helicopter, put it down. If you want the big boats, the houses, the cars, whatever you want, it's possible with this opportunity. But you've got to have big goals and dreams to push you to work harder every single day. Because if your goals and dreams aren't strong enough, just like Rod, when you reach what you've got, what you wanted, where are you going to go from there? Okay. It's a bit like the astronauts. When the astronauts went to the moon, they thought, wow, wouldn't it be fantastic to go to the moon? And when they got back from going to the moon, they thought, well, what do we do now? We've done the biggest thing that anybody could ever dream of, is go on the moon. So they had to, NASA had to put practices in place to keep these guys thinking of things to do in the industry because some of them became mentally ill because they couldn't find anything else to do after they came back from the moon. So you always got to have these goals and desires to stretch yourself. Okay? So... Make sure you're working with eagles, not ducks or chickens. Okay? There's some people who talk like eagles, they act like eagles, but when it comes to doing the activities, I work like chickens. they work like chickens and ducks. Okay? So why is this important? It's important so you know where to devote your time. It's what we call the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the people who join your business are going to produce 20% of your volume, of your business volume. The other 20% that join your business will produce 80% of your volume. So when I say to you, I've recruited a thousand people in my business, out of the thousand, you know, I've got now uh, close to a hundred people on my statement, okay, which is not bad over the 10 years, <laughs> but like I said, I've only got five or six front line that are very serious. And you're just looking for the people who are serious about changing their life. They want a better lifestyle, better income, you know, family time, traveling the world, having the lifestyle. Yeah? So, here's the reality. Most of the people that you, you have joining your business will produce small volume. And guess what? We love them. <laughs> because if you have, you know, 10 people doing 500 volume, that's an extra 5,000 organizational volume. We love them. And then the other 20% who do 5,000 volume a month, 10,000 volume a month, 15, 20,000 volume a month, we love them too. <laughs> yeah? And you never know that one day, maybe the one that's doing 500 volume, will become a person who does 15, 20,000 pounds. Why? Because they're attending the trainings, they're attending the meetings, they're getting inspired by the stories, and they say, well, hang on, if a lamb can bring all these guests to the meeting, maybe I can do that. If Patrick, who's been in the business for three days, made $1,400 profit, and he seems like a nice guy, but he seems all over the place with what he's saying, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's the importance of the meetings. That's why you need to keep attending the meetings. I had a conversation with a distributor the other day saying, I haven't been to a meeting for over a week and I feel my energy is not there anymore. And I said, well, that's what's going to happen when you're away from the meeting. I said, I've been in a business for 10 years 
And when I'm away from the meeting, I feel like that too. That's why I go to every meeting. So the meetings are really important because it keeps your attitude right. It keeps you inspired. It keeps you focused. It keeps you driven on what you want to achieve from the business. Some distributors say to me, but it's always the same thing at the meeting. All these people sharing the product stories, all these people sharing the income stories. And I say, great. If you think it's the same thing, why don't you do something different and come and do the meeting yourself? So you need the meeting. Here's something you should write down. When your business isn't growing as fast as you want it to grow, you need the meetings. And when your business is growing the way you want it to grow, the meeting needs you. I'll say it again. When your business is growing as fast as you want it to grow, you need the meetings. When your business is growing as fast as you want it to grow, the meeting needs you. Why does the meeting need you? It needs your story. It needs your energy. It needs your excitement. We are human beings. We all have good days and bad days. It's what we do about it that makes a difference. Here's the next one. What am I reading or listening to? What am I reading or listening to? You know, you come in my car, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm listening to personal development. <laughs> I'm a witness to that. We went to Mildura six hours of gym room. We were training tapes. <laughs> You know, it, why? Because you don't benefit anything by listening to the radio. You're living someone else's dream by listening to the radio. They've already hit it. They're pop stars. But what are you learning? You're learning the song, <laughs> but it's not making you rich. It's not bringing you closer to your goals. So work harder on yourself than you do on your business. There's a story about two waxmen. They had to knock down the amount, the most amount of trees in one day. One guy's just chopping away at the trees. Bang, bang, bang. Tree after tree is going down. The other guy would chop some trees, disappear for an hour. Come back, chop some trees, disappear for an hour. Come back, chop some trees, disappear for an hour. At the end of the day, guess who had the most trees knocked down? The guy who did it. Hmm? The first guy. Which one? The one that not kept knocking trees or the one that kept disappearing? The guy that kept disappearing. And the first guy said to him, Mate, I've been going all day at the trees. You've been disappearing every hour. And you've got more trees knocked down than me. He said, what did you do to knock down all those trees? He said, I was away sharpening my axe. Mm. So when you sharpen your axe, you're sharpening your mind. That's what we're talking about, the philosophy of sharpening your mind. What are you putting in here? What are you feeding your brain? Just like we feed our body, we've got to feed our brain. There's a saying in Herbalife, or there's a saying in the, in the world. Food for thought. What? Food for life too. <laughs> and it's food for thought. Yeah, nutrition for life. You know, nutrition for your mind. So what are you listening to? What are you reading? Don't go reading those trashy books, the novels, the stuff like that. Fifty grades of shit. You know, five grades of shade or whatever it's called. Grades of shade. Yeah, whatever it's called. I mean, what are you going to benefit from that? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe wow, you should read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But here's what's 
important to become a leader. Ask yourself the question, what am I becoming? What am I becoming with what I'm doing right now? What am I becoming with the people that I hang around? Choose your friends carefully. Because if your friends are in drugs, sex and rock and roll, there's a good chance that you're probably in that category too. Because you normally hang around people that you can associate with. And you become like them through either through peer or just enjoying what they're doing. Okay? So ask yourself, who am I hanging around? What have they got me doing? What have they got me becoming? What have they got me saying? How have they got me acting? And if it's something bringing you closer to what you want to achieve in your Herbalife business, then they're the people you want to be around. If it's something pushing you away from what you want to achieve, then you need to find new friends. And here's the reality. Sometimes it's people within our own direct family. So they say you can't choose family, right? But you can choose how, how much time you spend around your family. Yeah? So what am I becoming? What would Jim Rowan say? Study, practice, practice and, and teach. teach. This is another skill leadership <clears throat> needs to develop. You are all studying right now. You've taken all these notes. And guess what? I've been taking these notes for the last 10 years. So I study. I practiced it. And guess what? Now I'm teaching it. And one day, you guys will be up here for your organizations, anywhere in the world, doing the same thing. This is all part of leadership skills. The next one, which I said to Mark already, don't trust your memory. Write everything down in a journal. Don't write things on a scrappy piece of paper because you'll lose the, piece, the pieces of paper. Get yourself a journal. I was listening to Jim Ryan on the way here and he says he went and bought a $26 journal. And kids would say to him, why would you spend $26 on a journal when you can buy a small exercise book for 50 cents? And he said, because it presses me to write down good stuff. It presses me. If you spent more money on a journal, you want to make sure you're taking good notes because <coughs> you just invested in the journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can I have that CD after? No. Oh, my one's all <laughs> yeah, I got that one. Oh. It looks bad. Earn it. Be prepared for presentations and sharing your testimonies. If you hate it, find a way to love it. Be prepared. Practice at home. You, you, you guys have seen enough HOMs now to be able to do it with your eyes closed. Okay? If you don't know how to do it with your eyes closed, go home and practice. Take a copy of the slides from the laptop. Go home. Go through it. Practice it. Pretend you're talking to a crowd. Because if you want to become a leader, one day you're going to be talking in front of big crowds. You know, I had the experience of a lifetime in Macau. For the first time, well, it's not the first time, it's the second time, but, but Macau was actually doing an uh, emceeing section in front of 12,000 people. You know, that is an experience. Okay, last time they kept us up there for 30 seconds just to talk about how we got to Active World Team, but this time, we were like the hosts for
for the afternoon. So this is why these smaller meetings are really important because it, it grooms you to become a millionaire. That's a good one to write down. It grooms you to become a millionaire. Doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter your education, doesn't matter your job, doesn't matter your skin color, doesn't matter your religion, doesn't matter where you're from. We take any individual and groom them to become millionaires. A leader is very clear on their goals and their vision. <clears throat> If you are not clear on your goals and your vision, you need to go back and review your goals. We had a great goal setting workshop with Ali a couple of weeks ago, right here in this centre. Um, it will be emailed out tomorrow uh, on BizWork, so you should get an email about that presentation. If you didn't attend that, watch it. That's a training that Jim Rowan took us through. Uh, in our second year of business, we spent a weekend with Jim Rowan, um, and he got us to write 50 goals, okay, and how to achieve it. So, definitely watch that video, and it, even if you were here, it's good to reflect on it again and go, okay, maybe if I listen to it again, I'll pick up a few things that I didn't pick up on that night. Because the more you listen to things, the more you pick up things. You never get it in the first shot. Okay? So, and as you grow in the business as an individual, you start hearing things differently. Your attitude will be different towards it that you're listening to things differently. Yeah? Make sure you've got a plan. Okay. Got a plan. Some people say to me, if I had more money, I'll have a better plan. And the response to that is, if you had a better plan, you'd probably have more money. <laughs> so make sure you've got a plan. Make sure you've got a clear plan on what you're doing in your business every single day. I know from the moment I wake up till the time I go to bed exactly what I'm doing on a daily basis. Before the day has even started, I have finished the day because I know what the plan is. Make sure you're working the plan. It's one thing to have the plan, but if you don't work the plan, the plan is going to fail. So write this down. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. The next thing is getting good at the invitations. Get good at inviting people to the presentations. This is the simplest business in the world. It's not the easiest, but the simplest. How simple is our business? Use the products, wear the button, talk to people, and give an invitation. It's a simple business. But it's not the easiest. Because we invite, we invite, and we get disappointed that people didn't show. We invite, we invite, and the people that are saying... Hello, Tahira. Oh, you okay? Okay. Hi, Tahira. Okay. So, we invite, we invite, and some people don't show, and some people do show. And then guess what? Because we become better, people start showing. And I was just having this conversation with Ahlan. She goes, I keep getting all these people, but no one's signed yet. I 
And I said, just keep doing what you're doing. Right now, you're bringing more guests than anybody in the room. <coughs> so keep doing what you're doing. But the universe is paying her back from different avenues that she can't physically see it, but we can see it more than her because we're looking from the outside and she's in the, on the inside. You know, she signed up a couple of interstate people just by talking to them. She's had one do 500 volume this month. Great. So all of a sudden the momentum's starting to build up in her business. Why? Because she's actually becoming better herself. As a leader, we all need to keep getting customers. Just like you guys, every day we're talking to people about the products. We're working on getting new customers every single day. Because we would never tell our distributors to do something if we're not doing it ourselves. I've experienced everything in Herbalife except nutrition class. It's the only method I haven't done yet. Roger, I'll talk to you about getting booking in a shift after okay. this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only method. If you said to me, Roger, how do you do surveys? I'll tell you how to do surveys. If you said to me, how to do flyers? I'll tell you how to do flyers. I can tell you everything. I know how to do total plans, a skincare demonstration. I know how to do shake party. I know how to do it all because I've done it all. And it's easy for me to teach my distributors because I've done it. So here's a good thing as a leader. If you haven't tried nearly all the methods in Herbalife, you've got to try it at least once. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do it for 90 days. Even if you think it's not for you, you've got to do it at least once. <clears throat> and why is that important? Because you might have somebody who joins your business and says, I want to do surveys. And if you say to them, well, I don't know how to do that, I can't tell you how to do that. That might be the only method that that person can afford to do. And you've lost that person in your business. So it's important to experience all the methods so you can teach your downlines how to do the method. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. So at least once, for 90 days, you've got to try a method. Okay. As a leader, you've got to get, keep getting new distributors. The biggest mistake I see in this business quite often that people who are moving up the marketing plan do is they stop recruiting distributors. You always want to be frontline recruiting distributors. If you're not frontline recruiting, you are not going to build a royalty check. You're kidding yourself. Here's a good one to tie in with that. Let me get a bit more stronger with you guys. Because I care about you. If you're not producing between five to 15,000 volume points a month, you're not going to build a royalty check. If you're not producing at least five to 15,000 volume points a month, you are not going to build a royalty check. You've got to be getting at least one supervisor a month in your business. Frontline. Not your downlines go getting people. You personally <coughs> need to be getting at least one supervisor a month in your business. If you're not producing five to 15,000 a month, your business is going to find it hard to build. Okay? Okay. <coughs> 
is a great one for leadership skills. Learn to discipline your disappointments. Oh, but I invited ten people and they didn't show. Discipline your disappointments. Some are going to say they're going to come. Some are not. Some are going to say they're going to buy. Some are not. How long it takes you to get over the disappointment is really the key. <coughs> when I first started this business, I used to invite heaps of people. And nobody was coming. Nobody. And I said, gee, all these people are saying to me they're recruiting one in ten people. And here I am. I talked to 30 people to get one to come to a meeting. And then the more I kept listening to Jim Rowan, and he talks about the birds are going to get some, the hot weather's going to get some. I thought, oh, so it's not me. It's the birds and the hot weather. <laughs> it's the birds and the hot weather. Oh yeah. And the thorns. And the thorns. But don't come off the field. Yeah. yeah. So, like Jim Rowan would say, you got two options. You can chase the birds. But I wouldn't do that. Because if you chase the birds, you're leaving the field, and the birds are going to get more of the seed. Okay? So all our job is, guys, get very clear on this. Our job is to keep planting seeds. Patrick, how long did Ali talk to you about Herbalife for? Two years. Patrick? <laughs> two years! Two years! <laughs> it took Patrick two years! <laughs> And uh, I joined because of someone else. And yes, he joined else because of who made someone that Ali recruited ah. in the gym. They started making money with the business. So the he wants to see the proof. Uh, I refused to. She offered me the product to use. I'm like, yeah, I'll give back. I didn't use it. And then one day, it was the day, I was dizzy. I wanted to go for a run. And she was there, and I, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. And then, woo. <laughs> what? That's how it started, and I'm like, whoa. There's a change here. And yeah, wow. From Jeez. there, thanks. Yeah. So, discipline your disappointment. Okay, I signed up on the day. Me too. You know, here's, you know, I remember this training in Malaysia. We had this president's team as a guest speaker, I think it was from somewhere in Europe. He was a young guy. I think he was in his early 20s. And he's a president's team. And he said, you know what the difference is between me and you guys? He said, nothing phases me. He says, when a guest says no to me, I just go, right. <laughs> next. But here's what happens to us. Yeah, no. Oh my god! I don't want to join my business! I don't want to buy the products! And here's the thing we don't get upset for minutes, we get upset for days! Until end of month. I can't believe that guy doesn't want to join my business a week later! It's like. Get over it, move on, talk to more people. So how do you discipline your disappointments? Talk to more people. Because the reality is, if you're talking to enough people every day, you're going to find the ones that say yes, because it all averages out. I say this to all of the students. You don't need a lot of customers to make a lot of money. 20 to 30 customers is plenty. That's going to give you at least three to $5,000 a month. Just in retail profits. Guess what? You don't need a lot of distributors to make a lot of money. Rodney Drury has six frontline that produce $350,000 a month for him. 
What does that, can you just clarify that, the front line? Front line is people you personally recruit that are starting to build an organisation. So is that not distributed? Yeah, it's all, it's all distributed. It's all supervisors in your business. But you've got to go through the numbers yourself because your people are going to experience what you're experiencing. So if you're finding it hard to get customers, you better find a way to make it get easier because if you're finding it hard, how are you going to teach your distributors to get customers? If you're finding it hard to get people in the business, you better get good at it because if you're finding it hard, the distributor's going to find it hard. And whenever they pick up the phone and complain to you and say, oh, I'm finding it hard to get customers, you're going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm finding it hard too. <laughs> Not a good role as a leader. <laughs> oh, I'm finding it hard to get distributors. Yeah, I'm finding it hard too. <laughs> you just shut yourself in the yeah, port. Yeah. So, how do you get good at it? What does Jim Rowan say? Make up in numbers what you lack in skills. Talk to more people. Jim Rowan says you can walk out your door, you go five kilometers this way, five kilometers that way, five kilometers this way, five kilometers that way, and if there's nobody to talk to, kick the dog and talk to the dog. <laughs> But the reality is, five kilometers either way from your house, there's, we're talking thousands and thousands of people. How many, how many people walk past here every day? I reckon on average, one person every two minutes. Okay. So you can do the maths on it at the end of the day. Okay. That's just here. Okay. That's just in front of the place. Then I did one sale. 30-40 people today, one walked in, one sale. Three walked Three walked in. One sale program or, or the, the, coupons. the coupons? Okay, great. You know what? It's about building momentum. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So make up in numbers what you're lacking in skill. Dress for success is another one as the leader. Now, I truly believe this is an important one. I always emphasize it to all you guys. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in Malaysia, there was another network marketing company next door doing a presentation at a hotel that we were in. And I walked past this presentation, and the company's called Lamberger. It's, they sell perfect like a perfume that comes out of the PowerPoint or something. You plug it in and it gives the aroma of perfume. And they're not, they're pretty pricey products. But they're all dressed up like billionaires. And it's a product that people will buy once, put it in their house, and every now and then probably just buy the liquid to keep the smell coming through. Yeah, it's not consumable like our product. And I thought, gee, look at that meeting. Even if you don't like what they're doing, you just wanted to be part of that environment because of the way they dress for success. So dressing for success is important. When I say dress for success, you don't have to be in a suit and tie. It could be just pants and a shirt. Definitely no jeans, definitely no tracksuits. Okay. You've got to look the part. We're representing a $5.4 billion company. Act the part. Oh, but I can't afford a suit. So I'm not telling you to buy a suit. Pants and shirt. Oh, but I can't afford pants and shirt. Go to op shop and get one. There's one, one. Jerry Satonovich found a circle in our company. The first found a circle in our company. She went and bought a dress from the op shop for two dollars. She's a founder's circle. They're not a president's team, not a chairman's club. She's a founder's circle today. She was a school teacher before her life. 
George Knight, if you ask George Knight, he told me recently, for his first meeting, he went and bought a suit from the op shop. He's a guy that makes over $45,000 a month today. Doesn't matter. Think outside the box. Think, okay, how do I play the part? You've got to look the part. If you're not looking the part, you're not going to attract people to your business. You're kidding yourself. Because when a person walks in that door, your guest, the first thing they're looking at is who? Yourself. And if you don't play the part, if you don't portray that you look like a president's team, that you act like a president's team, that you talk like a president's team, you've already lost them at the door. That's before they even sit the presentation. You've lost them. So it makes the job of the presentation harder because you're not the part. Yeah? <clears throat> so dress for success. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business. I think we already mentioned that. Do personal development every single day. I do hours of personal development. There's no excuse why you can't do personal development. It's 24 hours in a day. Oh, but I'm busy with the kids and busy with this. No problem. There's a time when the kids are in bed, you can put earphones on and have a listen. An hour every day is a great number. If you can do more, great. Hey, if you can't do an hour a day, even half an hour a day, half an hour of reading a book just before you go to bed, or first thing in the morning. Wake up an extra half hour earlier or go to bed a half hour later. Big deal. You've got to sharpen your axe. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A great leader leads by example. They don't say, you do this, you do that, you do that, and they're sitting on their butt doing nothing. And I think I didn't complete what I was saying before. A lot of people, when they're moving up the marketing plan, they, they fall into management mode. Mm -hmm. My entire organization knows how hard I'm working at the moment. Because I'm focused on president's team. So they're all seeing, hey, I'm doing the roadshows out there. Ali's out there doing activities. We're, we're all doing activities to show our people that we're doing what we're telling you to do. That we're not just say do, 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 and we're sitting back going, oh, that's all right, they're all going to make us rich, we'll just sit here and enjoy. Lead by example. Lead by example in every area. Lead by example by coming to the meetings earlier than not halfway through a presentation. Lead by example by doing the activities with your people. Don't tell your people to do stuff if you're not there doing it. Lead by example with the way you dress, the way you talk. Always lead by example. A great question to ask yourself is this. If I was my distributor, would I like what I'm doing right now? What kind of example am I setting for my organisation? If I'm not rocking up to the meeting on time. If I'm missing a meeting every time. And even if you don't have an organisation yet, you've got to start playing these games from now so that when you do have an organisation, already you're leading by example. Don't tell your distributors to go to a meeting if you're not prepared to go to a meeting. My distributors know that I do Monday, Tuesday... Friday, Saturday. That's the four meetings a week that I'm committed to. I don't go on Thursday. So I say to them, I'm there these four days. Monday, Tuesday, Friday and Saturday. Everything else revolves around those days for me. Don't pick and choose your meetings. Don't pick and choose. Don't say, oh, I'll commit this week to Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Next week I'll just do Monday and Friday. No. 
Whatever you choose, be consistent with it. Don't pick and choose the meetings because you want to set an example for your people to be always at these meetings. Here's my advice to people if they want to make decent money with our company. Two meetings a week, two major meetings a month, two major meetings a year. What do I mean by that? Two HOMs a week. You've got six meetings to choose from a week. Monday, here. Tuesday, Malvern. Wednesday, lunchtime, Malvern. Thursday evening, Malvern. Friday night, here. Saturday morning, Malvern. Six meetings a week. So you can't say there's not enough meetings. Two major meetings a month. What's your two major meetings a month? Why Herbalife? Why now? And STS. Oh, but I can't make the STS. It's not a choice. If you're serious about wanting to change your financial future forever, you've got to commit to it. Because it could be one sentence from the guest speaker or even a trainer that changes the way you do your business. Just one sentence. What's the two major events a year? Extravaganza and World Team School. Or spectacular, like we've got in general. So if you haven't booked your ticket for Adelaide, Spectacular. You need to do that straight away. It's at an early bird special price. Okay? So let's move a bit quicker because time's running out. I already mentioned about who am I hanging around. Choose your friends carefully. Have a no excuse attitude. Oh, I can't make the meeting. No excuse. If you're serious about wanting to change your financial future, you've got to have a no-excuse attitude. Some of you, in, when we were in Macau, saw Faisal Solihan from Indonesia, who is now a four-diamond president's team. It means he's got four president's team in his business. And Faisal, when he does his trainings, he said, I had a soldier attitude. My mentor would say this, I'd say, yes, sir. He'd say, do this, I'd say, yes, sir. And I had this conversation with a distributor the other day, and they said, I'm sure when you started, you were doing your own things, trialing things. And I said, you know what? I guess the difference is, I didn't. My mentor would say, jump, I'd say, how high? He'd say, turn left, I'd say, which street? Turn right, which street? I'd do exactly as I was told because my mentor wanted me to become successful. Because if I didn't make money, he wasn't going to make money. It's a win-win situation. So I just said, no problem. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. And that's the attitude you need to have because your mentor wants what's best for you. Yeah? Uh, here's a great question. Is what I'm doing right now bringing me closer to my goal or moving me further away from my goal? Is what I'm doing right now bringing me closer to my goals or moving me away from my goals? Is it a distraction? Is it stopping me from achieving what I want to achieve with my Herbalife business? You've got to pay a price, guys. You need to understand, if it was easy to make $100,000 a month, everybody would be doing it. You've got to pay a price if you want to make that kind of money. Ah, oh, but this is meant to be a lifestyle business. Yes, it is. But until you get where you want to be, 
You've got to do the work. My brother, when I first got involved in the herbal life, he'd say, oh, you're always going to these meetings and they keep talking about lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. And I looked at him and I thought, here's a guy who's broke, renting, trying to give me advice. <laughs> I'm living a healthier and better lifestyle. So be careful who you listen to. Like I said, sometimes it's your family. Yeah? So what would Jim Ryan say? It's about the set of the, sale. of the sale. The same wind is blowing on all of us. But the direction of our sail is determining where we're going. If we're catching the wind or not. Make sense? Yeah? Here's a really good question if you really want to change your pin. What do I need to become to achieve my goals? What does that mean? What kind of person do I need to become to achieve what I want to achieve in this herbal life business? Am I not sensitive enough sensitive enough when I'm talking to my customers? Do I make them feel like I'm telling them they're fat? <laughs> Am I not sensitive to my distributors? That I'm just punching away at them and eventually if I keep punching I'll kill them. So what did Wayne say last week in the training? You've got to have an iron fist in a, in a velvet glove. Mm. Punch them hard, but the velvet will cushion it. <laughs> so that they don't take it personally. Here's a great line that I use with my distributors. You know I care about you, and you know I love you, but today I'm going to be strong with you. And if you give me permission to be strong with you, and don't take it to heart what I'm going to say, you'll move your business forward. And I get their permission first before I punch them. It's called tough love. love. Yeah? Here's a great one I heard today. You are all where you are in life because of your philosophy. Jim Rowan says, you need to change your philosophy. Here's the good news. We're not animals. We don't have a one-track mind like animals do. When it comes winter, the geese fly in which direction? They fly south. So... Why don't the geese fly north or west or east? Because they're conditioned mentally to always fly south in the winter. The good news is, we're not animals. We can change our thinking like that. We're not a tree. We're not planted in the ground. We can change the direction of where we're headed. And you do that by changing your philosophy. You need to think, you need to use your mind, you need to come up with ideas, you need to strengthen your philosophy. Here's how you fail. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. So here's a great question to ask yourself. Are there errors in my judgments? Albert Einstein has a quote. He says, Insanity is doing the same thing every day and expecting a different result. Insanity is doing the same thing every day and expecting a different result. Whose phone is this? Sorry, what was the quote? Sorry. Albert Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> 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 
Okay? Here's the secret to success. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. So eliminate the errors and replace it with disciplines practiced every day. Could you just repeat that? Oh, Secret of success? Yeah. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. What's the disciplines? Having a 90 day plan, putting it to action, going to work, talking to 10 people a day about the products, talking to 10 people a day about the business. Doing what you should be doing in your business. Having a timetable, working the timetable, <coughs> making sure you're clear on your 90 day plan. Okay. The question to ask yourself in the business as a leader is Am I the person that I want to recruit in this business? Am I the person I want to recruit in this business? Am I committed to the trainings? Am I committed to the meetings? Am I committed to using the products? Am I committed to talking to people every day? Am I? There's a saying in our business, if your business isn't growing as fast as you want it to grow, the first person you need to look at is yourself. You know, Rob Walsh said it on Saturday's meeting. He said, Michael Jackson's song. Man in the mirror. So ask yourself, is the man in the mirror or woman in the mirror doing what they should be doing before they tell their distributors to do what they should be doing? Learn from other people's experiences. Learn the right things and the wrong things. Learn the right things so you can copy them. Learn the wrong things so you can do the complete opposite of what they're doing. What's George Knight say at the end of every meeting? He says, I can give you advice on how to get rich, but when it comes to marriage, listen to me and do the complete opposite. Listen to me and do the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So, learn from other people's experiences the right and the wrong things. What to do and what not to do. Skip the trash. Skip the trash. We spoke about it, about the books you're reading, the things you're listening to, the people you're hanging around with. Skip the trash. Jim Rowan says, if you found a piece of bread in the garbage can, are you going to eat it? No. Skip the trash. Is what also Jim Rowan says. It's not what happens to us. It's what we do about what happens to us. Say that again. It's not what happens to us. It's what we do about what happens to us. It's what we do about what happens to us. The same thing happens to everybody. Oh, but you don't understand. I've got kids. So? So I have 99% of the people on the planet. Oh, but I can't go. All choices that we make, guys. It's all choices. We're nearly done. Jim Rowan also says, your pin is determined by the value you bring to the marketplace. By the value you bring to the marketplace. Why are we always recruiting people in our business? Because we want to find people with value that they can bring to the marketplace. That's why Herbalife is so unbelievable. We've got people of all walks of life in here. All walks of life. From housewife to barristers to, you know, whatever. It's just mind-boggling that all these people become successful with Herbalife because of the value they bring to the marketplace. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what's an example? Well, an example. Let's say you've got an IT background. Great! You're the type of person I'm looking for. <laughs> because I know nothing about internet. But if you've got that skill, wow, you can build an amazing business because you know more about computers than I do. 
embarrassed and walks in and says, well, how can I tie into this business? Great! You're the type of person I'm looking for. <laughs> because you have a skill of the way you put the words together <laughs> that you can easily attract people to the products or the business. So look for what skills you have and take advantage of the skills you have to build your business. So don't major in the minors. Most of the time we muck around with things that aren't important to our financial future. Oh, but I've got to fix the car, I can't come to the meeting. What's Jim Rowan say on the CD? He says the screen door fell off the hinges. And you can't let your house fall apart. And the thorns are going, ha, ha, ha. Yeah? Because we major in the minors. I can't leave the house in a mess. Why not? When you make enough money, you'll get a bloody maid who'll clean the house. So sometimes you just got to move the priorities. <laughs> You've got to channel your priorities. What's more important to you? Yeah? Yeah, not cleaning my room. That's not first priority. <laughs> We're nearly done. Nourish and protect your organisation. This is a really important one. Nourish. Nourish and protect your organisation. Why do you think we do these trainings every month, yeah, every Monday? To nourish and protect our organisation. Because we're nourishing you. We're giving you information that you can use in the marketplace or developing yourself so that you're being fed the words, the inspiration, the, the excitement, the energy, and that way we're protecting your mind. Yeah? But also, here's another one. A, we work with a lot of different organizations. And some organizations, you don't want them talking to your people. Because they do the wrong way of herbal. You know, they might be stealing people's guests at the meetings. So, make sure you always got your eye on your organisation. You know, when when you guys come into the meeting, here's okay because this is all our team anyway. But when you start working with other organisations, there's people who do Herbalife the right way and people who do Herbalife the wrong way. And you want to keep protect your people from the people that are doing it the wrong way. Because you don't want them teaching your people the wrong things to build the business, which will hurt their business, yeah? So protect your organisation. Here's a great question. What's my attitude at the moment? I always say to people, whatever your problems are at home, when you come to the meeting, you leave the problems outside the door. Don't bring your problems in here. Because if you have problems... You're bringing the energy of the problems into the meeting. Leave it outside. And when you're going back out, you can pick it up on your way home. <laughs> but don't bring it to the meeting. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what's my attitude at the moment? What am I saying to myself? What am I complaining about? What's Larry Thompson say? Change the film in the projector. Mm -hmm. Wrong movie! Whoops! Eject! <laughs> <laughs> yeah? No matter what your problems are, here's a great word to write down. Unbelievable! <laughs> what do I say every time somebody rings me? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How's your day? Unbelievable. Because even if I've got problems, you're not going to believe it. It's unbelievable. I had Dr. Rod came up to me one day and he said, Roger, I never, you know, I never know whether to believe what you're saying or not believe what you're saying because it's always unbelievable. And I said, that's right, that's the whole idea. Because why should I project whatever problems are happening in my life, why should I give you my problems? Everybody's got problems. That's life. Oh, the cat ran away, the, you know, I had the hot water system blow up today. Unbelievable! <laughs> really? So, what do I do? Get a guy, fix it. Move Done. Move on. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, my water system, oh my god, I'm going to cross my eyes. Unbelievable. Move on. Okay? 
Okay. Now, if you want to build your business as a leader, you need to chase the promotions. All the Herbalife promotions. You need to be very clear on all those promotions up on the wall. You need to know what to do to qualify for the VIP or the party at the Spectacular. You need to know what to do to qualify for the Herbalife vacation next year. You need to know what to do to get to the President's Team Summit next year. If you're not chasing your promotions, guess what? You're not going to build a business. I understood this straight away when I joined the business. That's why I've been on every Herbalife vacation since I've been in the business. Because I chased the promotion. Because the promotion reality is, the vacation, for example, is 60, 80, or 100,000 in a 10 month period. Yes? Yeah. Which means you should be producing at least 6, 8, or 10,000 volume points a month. Yes? yes? If you're producing 6, 8, or 10,000 volume points a month, that means you're putting through at least one, or two, or maybe even three supervisors a month in your business. Yes? So, where's the downfall? <clears throat> there is none. The downfall is if you don't chase it. So you've got to chase the promotion. Who wants to be on the vacation next year with us? Wherever it's going to be. Whether it's Hawaii or Malaysia or wherever. Okay? So you've got to chase the promotion. You need to know what to do to qualify for the promotion. Yeah? Let's move on real quick. Uh... Get rid of the negative thoughts. Learn how to manage your money. Is another one as a leader. 70% of what you earn is for you to keep. To do whatever you want to do with it. Whether it's the running costs of your business. Whether it's paying bills. Whether it's having fun. 70% of what you earn is yours to keep. To do with it. With whatever you like to do with it. The other 30%. Is broken up in three areas 10%, 10%, 10%. And here's what each category is for 10% is to go towards charity. Learn to start giving back. Learn to start giving back. And if you can't afford to put 10% towards charity, at least put whatever you can afford to put to start. But eventually work it up to 10% for charity. The other 10% is for you to put into savings. It's very important you start saving some money. You know, when I first started in the business, this was the biggest problem for me. Saving money. Because I was a million dollars in debt, $10,000 worth of expenses every month. And I couldn't save anything because I was making less than what I was paying out. And the more I kept listening to the CDs, the tapes and that, it says, hey, if you took out 10 cents out of one dollar, and you just got in the habit of doing that, then as your check gets bigger, start putting more. Whatever you can afford to do, do it. Donate to charity. Okay? Don't put some money into savings. I used to say, well, I can't put anything towards savings because my bills are higher than my income. But you know what happened? I changed the way I thought. I thought, hang on. If someone making all this money is telling me to save whatever I can save, hey, I used to put $10 here, $10 there. Before you know it, the $10 becomes $100, the $100 becomes $1,000, that $1,000 becomes $10,000. Yeah? And that's the habit you need to create from now. Even if you're making very little money in Herbalife, you need to start the habit from now. And the last 10% is for you to invest. Invest in something that will bring you back a return. Okay? Invest. Learn to start investing. Well, what if I bought this product, fixed it up and sold it? Rodney Drury builds hotels now. Not that he needs any more money. <laughs> but he's, he's got the skill mm -hmm. of investing so that he's always got money coming from all different angles. 
Okay? So learn to invest. Walk, talk, dress, act like a president's team. Have the right attitude all the time. I said already, you must pay a price if you want to go president, yeah? Who am I around? I already said that. Who's influencing me is a good one. There's a story about a little bird that's got its wing over its eye and it's crying. And another bird came up to him and said, Why are you crying? And he moved his wing away and his eye was pecked out by another bird. And the other bird said, Ah, oh, I see why you're crying. Because you let the other bird peck your eye out. And the little bit bird said, No, that's not why I'm crying. He said, I'm crying because I let him. So who's pecking at you? Yeah? So, it's a great story. Be ethical all the time. Don't do the wrong thing in Herbalife. Make sure you always do the right thing in Herbalife. Don't steal other people's guests. Don't steal other people's customers. Don't do the wrong thing. Don't ship products into countries that aren't open. Be ethical. Because if you do the wrong thing, it will come back to you. And if you do the right thing, it will also come back to you. Okay? Have a good reputation in the Herbalife world. I've seen people <clears throat> steal other people's guests. I've seen people sign up other people's distributors. I've had it happen to me. But you know what I say? No problem. Your time will come. Yeah. Yeah, so be ethical all the time. Are the people you're working with... This is a great question. One more and then after that. Are the people you're working with the people that you want to keep working with? Are the people I'm working with Bringing me closer to my goals or moving me away from my goals? Are the people I'm working with just chewing up my time and not doing anything? Guys, if the people you're working with are wasting your time, here's what I recommend. Find more people. Forget about them. Move on. I have a philosophy. You get on my train, or get off my tracks. Because this train is moving, and you're either on it, or you're not. There's another philosophy. We're going to climb the mountain together. And you're safe because I've got you on the rope from my hip. And I'm going to be pulling you up as I move up the mountain. Now, if you're tired... If you can't keep up with the pace, you stay where you are. I'm going to unleash you. And when you decide to come back, I'll come back and pick you up again. But it's easier to find new people. Wayne says this all the time. It's easier to give birth than resurrect the dead. No question. Don't waste time with people who are going to waste your time. And finally, Jim Rohn would say, why not become a millionaire? People would say, well, you don't have to tell me why I have to become a millionaire. Wouldn't it be great to have a million dollars? And Jim Rohn would say, no, no, no. He said, it's not about having the million dollars. It's about being the person you need to become to make the million dollars. There's this guy on one of his CDs that he spoke about. He says, one of this guy's dreams, uh, what was his name? He's, he's the one that created like the machinery for moving earth you know, like Caterpillar, you know the company yeah. Caterpillar that digs and all. So, this guy built a phenomenal company, huh? His name's Bobcat. No, he's with Eka. I can't remember his first name. Um, so, when this guy died, they went through, they were cleaning up his house, 
And in one of his drawers, they found a piece of paper. And it had his goal. And his goal was, I'm going to spend the first half of my life creating wealth. And I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. This guy, in his first half of his life, made $450 million. And he spent the last half of his life giving it all away. Wow. Wow. What a goal. <clears throat> so what's your goal? What's your goal and dream? Sometimes when you ask people what their goal is, they say, oh, if I can just pay the bills. <laughs> If I can just pay the bills. What a goal! <laughs> you don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to work today just to pay the bills. It's not exciting. So why not become a millionaire, not for the money, but for what it makes of you to become a millionaire? Okay. It's all about the journey, guys. Some people look at me and say, Roger, it's taken you 10 years to get to millionaire team. And I say, no problem. I say, it's not a race. I've got friends who've earned millionaire team in five months. But it's not a race. Better to be a pack horse than a race horse. Than a race horse. I can tell, I can tell she works harder on herself than she does on her business. And that's why Julia Dare is a go-getter. You know, look what she did with the nutrition club within one week of coming back from New Zealand. That's a go-getter. That's where you know to devote, devote time to a person or not devote. Are they doing what they're going to do or they're not going to do it? I, you know, I don't like people saying, I'm going to do, I'm going to go do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, and then they don't do. Well, do what you said you're going to do. Oh, but I can't because of this. No excuses. So here's the reality. You either do it, or you change your plan of what you want to achieve in the business. We're not <coughs> saying you all have to go presidents. But the reality is, if you want to go presidency, you've got to work a plan. If you're not willing to work a plan, maybe we need to change your goals or the time frame that you're saying you want to go to prison. Seppi from New Zealand and Julia sings. Seppi's been in the business for less than one year. He's doing his third month millionaire team this month. And when I was there, he was on 100,000 volume points. Last week, he was on 100,000 volume points. This guy will team. probably go press team by the end of this year. One year. Mm -hmm. But why? What makes him any different than any of us? The it's only difference easy. is he's doing the work. He talks to 50 to 100 people a day. Ooh. I talk to 20 people, my brain's fried. <laughs> I can't talk to more than 20 because my head's going, woo! And he talks to 50 to 100 people a day. Seppi nearly lost his house before Herbalife. The bank was going to take away his house. He got on the products, lost weight. Actually, you can probably share the story better than me. Do you want to share the story? Yeah, sure thing. Um, Seppi was introduced to the products through a flyer. Damien, his upline, had left the weight loss flyer in his postbox and he got it and he went to Damien and Damien's like well these are the programs this is the ultimate 520 something New Zealand whatever and Seppi's like I don't have money and Damien's like well if you don't have money I'm not going to give you product find the money so because Damien runs a nutrition club and he had a promotion on that says bring in three people and get one meal for free and you know weight loss you replace two meals so every day Seppi was bringing in five six seven twenty 30 people a day to Damien's nutrition club to get his free meals. So if it was one free meal per three people, he was getting six free meals a day and it was accumulating for him. And then he started getting his wife to get the free meals and introduce more people. And apparently, Seppi says, told us this 
he found $50 on the floor and he took it to Damien and he said, here's 50 bucks, can I get my wife started on the product? And that's how they first started. They started replacing the meals through the nutrition club because they couldn't afford a program. However, he said, well, go find the people and he went and he found the people. And his massive organization is all of his people. Like, it's just, it's just incredible. And now he goes, do you know how it feels from the bank calling you every single day, asking for money? And he's like, now I'm cruising to the bank, paying $10,000 easily, comfortably on my mortgage every month. He's like, now do you know how it feels rather than them making mm -hmm. the call? I don't get any calls anymore for any debtors. So, <laughs> so guys, we kept you over time tonight. Sorry about that. But thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. No worries. Thank you.